Hi, third grade. This week in our anthology, we're going to read a great historical fiction story. It's called Nora's Ark, and it's based on a real life event that happened in the past. And again, we're focusing on that essential question of how can weather affect us? We're going to read about a farm family that survives a storm and a terrible flood. Before we get into the text, I want to show you some Google Slides that I have that we're going to use throughout the story. So this is our multi-flow map focusing on the skill of cause and effect. Now, while we read the story, we're going to talk about the causes, okay, that have led to this historical event of the 1927 flood in Vermont. And we know that on this side, we have our effects. Okay. And again, our focus question is how can weather affect us? To give you some background before we begin, the history of the 1927 flood, it's known as Vermont's greatest disaster. The causes. There was 150% more rain than normal. The excess rain saturated the soil, causing a flood. The excessive rain pushed the landscape over the edge, and the water ran into the already high rivers. The lack of plants and greenery were some of the causes that led to this great disaster. We know on our cause and effect multi-flow map that those causes would be on this side of our thinking map. Okay, now let's explore some of the effects. The effects of the flood. The flood destroyed 1,285 bridges. The flood killed at least 84 people. The excessive rain changed the landscape, and the water destroyed many buildings. Animals drowned, crops and form farmland were lost. So that are, those are the effects that we would then put on this side of our multi-flow map, showing what happened as a result of the flood in Vermont. Okay? As we read the story, we're going to look at some cause and effects text dependent questions. We're going to look at the text, we're going to answer questions within. And right now, I hope you guys are eager and excited to learn more about this story and this actual flood that happened. All right, let's get into the story Nora's Ark. When I was born, Grandma said I was so small, I looked like a little bird. That's why I was named Wren. Grandma may look small too, but she's made of granite, and she says I'm tough, just like she is. Good thing, or we never would have survived the 1927 flood. Grandma and Grandpa lived on a little farm by a river in Vermont. They didn't have much money, but there was always plenty to eat. Milk from Grandpa's cows vegetables from grandma's garden, apples and plums from the orchard, fish from the river, and maple syrup that grandpa and grandma made each spring. All right, so take a look at the illustration and look at them working together as a family on the farm, taking care of the different animals. You see grandma, grandpa, and Wren. Grandpa was building Grandma a new house. It sat on a hill, and when finished, it would have electricity, a ringer washing machine, and best of all, an indoor bathroom. I don't need a new house, Horace, Grandma said. We've lived here 40 years, raised eight children, and been as happy as a family could be. That new house is just gravy. What do you mean, I asked her. Grandma thought how she could explain it to me. You like potatoes, 
don't you, Ren? Yes, ma'am, I told her. Grandma made the best mashed potatoes in the world, with lots of milk, butter, and pepper in them. You could make a meal out of just her potatoes. You like gravy on them? I reckon. Grandma did make good gravy. But your potatoes taste good without gravy, too, I told her. Exactly, Grandma said. Gravy tastes good, but you don't need it. And I don't need that new house. I like living here. But Grandpa kept right on building. When it began to rain on November 2, 1927, no one along the river had any idea nine inches of rain would fall in two days. Life in Vermont was about to change forever. The rain came down in torrents. It drummed so loudly on the roof, we couldn't talk. Grandma spent the morning baking bread. By noon, she'd made 27 loaves. Grandma, why'd you make so much bread? I shouted. Grandma watched the water stream down the windows. We might need it, she said. But I couldn't imagine how we'd eat 27 loaves of bread. When Grandpa came in for lunch, he poured a quart of water out of each boot. I've never seen the river rise so fast, he said. I think we'd best get up to the new house. For once, Grandma didn't argue. By the time she'd packed quilts, candles, her photo albums, and a sack of potatoes, the water was up to the porch. Grandpa let all the cows and horses out of the barn. What will happen to them, I asked. They'll get to higher ground and be all right, he said. Don't worry, Wren. But I could tell he was the one who was worried. I loaded all those loaves of bread into my old baby carriage, covered it with an oil cloth, and pushed it through the mud and rain to the new house. Guess I built this place just in time, Grandpa said. If I didn't know better, I'd think you caused this flood just so I'd have to move into the new house, Grandma said. But she seemed glad to be on higher ground, too. We'd scarcely set foot inside when we heard pounding on the door. The three Guthrie boys stood on the porch, burlap bags in each hand. The bags squirmed and squawked. Our barn's flooded. Can we keep the chickens here? They emptied the chickens onto the kitchen floor. Some of our heifers are stranded in the fields, one of the boys said. We're gonna see if we can push them to higher ground. I'll go with you, Grandpa said. May I go too, I asked. No, Grandpa and Grandma both said at once. Be careful, Grandma told him, and he and the boys disappeared through the rain. Even with all those chickens, the house seemed empty with Grandpa gone. So Grandpa built this brand new house for Grandma up on this hill not knowing that this flood would be such a disaster that all of these chickens would need higher ground. The flooding was happening below, so the neighbors were starting to bring their animals to keep them safe. Grandma saw me shiver and wrapped a quilt around me. It's getting colder, she said. I wish I had my cook stove here. She held me close as we stood watching the rain. I wished Grandpa would come back, I said. Me too, said Grandma. We both shrieked when a huge head appeared in the window. It was Major, one of the Ferguson's horses. I was even more astonished when Grandma opened the door and led him in. You're bringing Major into the house? We don't have a stove, Grandma said. He's big. He'll add heat to the place. Major took up half the kitchen. The other half was taken up by loaves of bread and chickens. We had chickens in the cupboard, chickens on the shelves and in the baby carriage, even chickens roosting on Major's back. Our next visitors were Mrs. LaFleur and her daughter Madeline. Mrs. LaFleur didn't speak much English. Our house wash away, Mrs. LaFleur said. We rowboat here. Madeline looked around the kitchen and her eyes opened wide. Des poulets dans la chérie des bébés? she said. I guess she'd never seen chickens in a baby carriage before. So the town is starting to gather and also the animals. They have a horse in their kitchen and chickens. 
So they're starting to welcome in um, shelter for, for these families. All right, before we continue, I want you to take a look at the illustrations here. You can see the house on the hill that Grandpa built is becoming very, very full of people. And then look outside at what's happening to their homes. By nightfall, the house was full to bursting. Besides Mrs. LaFleur and Madeline, Mr. and Mrs. Guthrie, the Fergusons, and the Craig family had moved in, 23 people in all. There were also three horses, a cow, five pigs, a duck, four cats, and 100 chickens. Wow. So reread that paragraph and see how it has multiplied. Now it says they have 23 people in all, three horses, a cow, five pigs, a duck, four cats, and 100 chickens. The river rose until the house became an island, and we watched our neighbors' houses wash down the river. Mr. and Mrs. Guthrie had brought a side of salt pork with them, though we had no way to cook it. The Fergusons had saved their radio, a skillet, a bag of dried apples, and a three-legged cat. They were delighted to find Major alive and well and in our kitchen. The Craigs had lost everything but the clothes on their backs. We're just glad we all got out alive, Mrs. Craig said, which only reminded Grandma and me that Grandpa had still not returned. We had bread and dried apples for supper, and rainwater Madeline and I scooped out of the LaFleur's rowboat. The water had a few fish scales in it, but no one complained. With no stove or beds, we all huddled together for warmth, sharing Grandma's quilts as best we could. We sang Scottish songs and row, row, row your boat in a round, and Mrs. Lafleur taught us A la Claire Fontaine, a tune that brought tears to our eyes, even though we couldn't understand the words. Mrs. Guthrie told how her grandfather had fought at Gettysburg, and Mr. Craig kept us laughing with stories of his boyhood days in a logging camp in Maine. If it hadn't been for the thought of Grandpa out there somewhere, it would have almost seemed like a party. All right. So on page 492, right here, it talks about how the people, the Craigs, had lost everything but the clothes on their backs. And their attitude, we're just glad we all got out alive. It said that no one complained. Even though they were all there and so many homes were lost, they kept their spirit happy and excited that they were safe. But in the back of the mind of grandma, and Wren, they're still concerned about Grandpa, who has not returned. So here, making predictions, what do you think will happen to Grandpa? Let's see. I knew Grandma was worried about Grandpa. I was worried too. He should have been home by now. I wanted to ask Peter Ferguson if he would come with me to look for Grandpa, but I knew if Grandma overheard, she'd forbid me to go. So when the sky was getting light, I sneaked out and sprinted for the rowboat. Grandma was just getting into it. What are you doing here, she wanted to know. Same as you, I reckon, going to look for Grandpa. It's too dangerous, Grandma said. Go back to the house. But I shook my head. Grandma looked at me hard. All right, she said. We'll look for him together. I pushed us off into the water that was full of furniture and trees and dead animals. Grandma had to be careful where she rode. It was raining so hard I had to keep bailing water out of the boat. Nothing looked the same. Fields had become lakes. Just the roofs of houses stuck up above the water. On one of those roofs, we saw a dog. 
Why, I believe that's Sam Burroughs' collie, Grandma said, and she rode toward the house. The collie barked when she saw us coming. I held on to the roof to steady the boat. Come on, girl, I said, and the dog jumped into the boat beside me. She whined and licked my face. Okay, so they have not found Grandpa yet, but they did rescue a dog. Look at the picture here at how high the water is above the homes. Very frightening. There's Grandpa. The strangest sight was yet to come. We rounded a bend in the river, and I squinted, sure that my eyes were fooling me. Then I heard Grandma's voice behind me. Wren, are these old eyes failing me, or is that a cow in a tree? Grandma asked. It was indeed. A red and white A shire was wedged into the crook formed by two branches, and she was bawling piteously. Higher up in the branches was a man. He was hollering almost as loudly as the cow. I believe we found your grandpa, Grandma said, relief flooding her face. I was on my way home when I got swept away by the water, Grandpa said. I thought I was a goner too, but when this cow floated by, I grabbed her tail and stayed afloat until she got hung up in this tree. We pushed and pulled on that cow, but she was stuck fast, and we finally had to leave her. Grandpa promised he'd come back and try to cut her free, but he was crying as we rode away. Okay, so what has happened to Grandpa? Was your prediction correct? I'm sure you didn't predict that he would be stuck in a tree with a cow, but yet they found him. It says that Grandpa was crying as they rode away. So Grandpa is very frightened, but he also made a promise to the cow that he would come back and try to cut her free. Goodness, Grandma said, all that fuss over a cow. But Grandpa wasn't crying over just one cow. All our cows drowned, Nora, he said. The house, the barn, the horses, they're all gone. Grandma wiped the tears from his cheeks. You're safe, and that's all that matters, she said. We'll have to start over, Grandpa said. And Grandma smiled. We can do that, she said. Grandpa smiled back at her. And I knew then that no matter what, everything would be all right. All right. So I love Grandma's attitude here. When Grandpa said, we've lost everything, the house, the barns, the horses, they're all gone. And she says, you're safe. That's all that matters. We can start over. We can do that. Now, Grandpa has no idea what has gone on since he's been gone. And now he's going to walk into his house. The Craigs, Fergusons, Guthries, and LaFleurs were glad to see us. Madeline even hugged me. She was afraid you drowned, Peter said. He blushed. I was too, he added. When Grandpa saw all the animals in the kitchen, he burst out laughing. Nora, I thought I was building you a house, but I see it was really an ark. Mm -hmm. So Nora's Ark is how the title became. He said, Nora, I thought I was building you a house, but I see it was really an ark. So here's all the animals and people in their home. It took three days for the water to go down enough so our neighbors could go see what was left of their farms. Grandpa put his arm around Grandma. I'll finish this house the way you want it, Nora he said, but he shook his head when the Fergusons led Major out. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get those hoof prints out of this floor, he said. So three days for the water to go down, and all of the people who found shelter in their home were now able to come outside and see what was left after the flood. I've now lived in my grandparents' house for more than 40 years, and those hoof prints are still on the floor. I never sanded them out because they remind me of what's important, family and friends and neighbors helping neighbors. Like Grandma said, everything else is just gravy.
I really like this story because it really teaches a lesson and it's through a, a real experience that happened. Here it says, what happened after Ren and Grandma rescued Grandpa? Tell the events in order. So that would be sequencing and summarizing. What I want to do now is go back to our Google Slides and talk about the cause and effects that happened in the text. All right. So according to the text on page 498, what causes Grandpa to cry? So if we look here into the paragraph, what causes Grandpa to cry? It says, Grandpa wasn't crying over just one cow. All our cows drowned, Nora, he said. The house, the barn, the horses, they're all gone. So the cause of Grandpa to cry was much greater than just one cow. All right, using the illustration on page 499 from the text, what effects did the flood have on Grandma's house? Now looking at this picture, I'm sure you can see why the story was called Nora's Ark and all of the animals that are in the house, what effects did the flood have on grandma's house? Here we have a frame using some of the depth and complexity icons that we use in our classroom. Our historical event of the 1927 flood in Vermont and our focus question of how can weather affect us. We're going to talk about the impact. Okay. How does the flood impact grandma and grandpa, Wren, and their neighbors? What did they lose? I'd like you to consider the impact of that flood. For ethical issues. It states on page 492 that the Craig family had lost everything but the clothes on their backs. How does Mrs. Craig show what she values most when she continues to be thankful that everyone is safe and not worried about material things? On page 498, Grandma says, you're safe and that's all that matters. What message is the author trying to give about the theme of this story with Grandma's words? You see that Grandma is communicating that she does not care if they've lost all those things and they can start over because she's happy that Grandpa is safe and they're all together. These are the three different icons I'd like you to consider in the frame. You will have the Google Slides to create a text box and write your response. Good job, thinkers. Proud of you. Great story.